Okay then, hello everyone and welcome to this Tech Talk. Thank you for joining. Today we're going to talk about dependency injection in Go. Now, what does that mean? We're going to explain that. We're going to go through a small example and uh, you'll see how dependency injection can be useful in your daily work. So a little bit about me. I'm Justus. I'm a software developer. I work in Berlin. Uh, you can always contact me. My email address is right here, hello at justus.pw. Very excited to chat, especially if you have any questions about this talk. Just feel free to send me a message. So let's talk about the problem with writing big applications in general and a topic that is very dear to my heart, testing. So today, we're going to address three problems. So first of all, any big application out there, let's say your typical web application that runs in the cloud has dependencies, and they're not always obvious. Uh, now, oftentimes, you will say, OK, my dependency is, for example, uh, MongoDB. But it could also be a little library that you're including in your code. So for example, you're using a certain string formatter. And uh, while you might keep track of maybe five to six dependencies, let's say you have 10, 20, 30 libraries in your code. It just gets really hard to keep track of everything. And that also means that it is really hard to test your code at some point, because not always can you access any API that you have. So for example, if you are in a continuous integration environment, meaning you're building your code somewhere in the cloud on, uh, on a server instance, it means that maybe you're not able to access all the databases or all the uh, other services that you're using. So for example, on your local machine, you have a MongoDB instance. And maybe on CircleCI, which you might be using for continuous integration, it's really hard to set up MongoDB. You never know. And that just means that if, you are, if your code is coupled to an external service, if that service is not available, you're going to run into a problem. And the problem is that your code is usually, especially if it's growing organically, it's tightly coupled to these outside uh, dependencies. So in the, the other issue is that when you have a lot of dependencies, and suddenly, let's say, uh, you're, you're using um, a third-party service to do your search indexing, and they suddenly go out of business. And that API that they're offering to you in the framework, they're not available anymore. So in that case, changing your code to maybe use a different service provider uh, will involve a lot of maintenance. And uh, especially in um, languages that are statically typed, like Golang, it means that you can't just, uh, for example, use one of the many mocking frameworks and just go around your code like a cowboy and replace global dependencies. So um, that is the issue you'll run into at some point. But luckily, there's a very structured approach in Golang that you can follow, and you'll be able to take care of all your dependencies and uh, make your code easier to maintain and to test. So let's go through a really quick example. And this will not take too much time. Um, so let's say we're developing a mail delivery application. A mail will typically have some content and a recipient. So we're defining our struct right here, type mail struct, content, that's a string, recipient, that's a string as well. So easy stuff. And this mail needs to be delivered somehow. So. Uh, first of all, we're going to introduce a mailer API. Um, and uh, for this example, we're just going to treat this like a black box, which means that we don't, we don't care what it exactly does. The only thing we care about is that it exposes one function, which we can call. So let's say we want to deliver our mail. Then right here, I've defined a Golang function on the mail data type that I've introduced right here. And it, allow, it allows us to send this mail. So what we do right here, standard Golang pattern, we call the external service right here, which we've called mailbib. Uh, we send a 
something with certain content and to a certain recipient. And we just check whether it has been delivered or not by checking for the error return. And if everything is all right, we just return a nil. If not, then we annotate the error that MailBib returns uh, with, with our own little message right here, MailBib error, and return that instead. Uh, and this is the function that MailBib uses internally to send emails. Uh, again, this, this is only a fictional example. So I don't think MailBib really exists. Uh, and it takes your data right here. Uh, and there's a little check right here, because Mail, MailBib happens to be a continental European mail delivery service. So they actually deliver physical letters to your recipient. And in this case, since a lot of people, especially children, right before Christmas, want to send a letter to Santa, uh, unfortunately, MailBib is not going to be able to help them with that because they only deliver continental European mails. So we do a little check right here and see whether it's Santa. And in that case, we'll have to return an error. Quite unfortunate. Otherwise, we'll just append it to our mails, whatever that means, and uh, I'll put a little log message right here and return nil so there was no error. And then, as an example, uh, let's try sending an email to Bigfoot. Uh, and let's just pretend that Bigfoot lives in Europe. So I'm creating the mail right here, uh, as, as a, um, and it's using the mail struct right here, which I've introduced before. Uh, as you can see, content, recipient, it's all set right here. And uh, we're sending the mail. That means standard Golang pattern right here. I'm checking for the error uh, that uh, if it has occurred after calling send upon the mail. And uh, if there's an error, we will output something. If not, then the mail has been su successfully delivered. And uh, it works just fine. So our program outputs send hello world to Bigfoot. So all's good. OK, but now let's try sending something to Santa. And you already know that. MailBib uh, refuses to send mail to Santa. And uh, so we're setting the recipient of the email that we've initialized right here, the email struct to Santa. And we, we, we're, we'll try sending it again. And what happens here is uh, very unsatisfying. Uh, we're getting an error from the MailBib API because it tells us that the recipient is too far away. Well, Santa lives in the Arctic Circle, at least according to some sources. So Bad luck. It means we'll probably have to swap out our MailBib service for something else. But then the question, obviously, is what about continental European mail? I mean, for that, MailBib was still good enough. So it's a big problem, because we can't just change our code every time we want to send it to someone else. So that's why dependency injection can be one solution to this problem. In our case, right here, we'll define some generic mail delivery service. And for that, we'll use a Golang interface. And uh, the only requirement to our service is that it can send something to someone and that it returns an error. And we'll have to modify our mail structure a little bit. So instead of just storing the content string and recipient string, it also stores a reference to the delivery service. And this delivery service, we can then adjust uh, how we like. And uh, you'll see how, we, how we're going to use that. So we can initialize our email right now in this code. And as you can see, I'm setting an additional attribute called uh, mailbib at, called delivery. And we're going to set it to mailbib.mailer. And of course, we have to adjust our mailing method as well. So instead of saying mailbib, uh, dot send. We'll have to say e dot delivery dot send. So that means we're going to use the uh, delivery struct, uh, the delivery reference that's stored right here, and we're going to call the send method on that. So it's very similar to our previous example, except for that now uh, we can we're able to change the mailer if we want to. So as we know, MailBib refuses to send emails to Santa. So it's quite sad. But luckily, there is another mailing service which we can use. It's called MailArctica. 
and uh, it delivers mail to the Arctic Circle. So what we can do right now is we can set the delivery service, the external dependency. We can set it to mailarctica.mailer, and we can call it. So after we've set it to mailarctica.mailer, we will try the same thing again, mail.send. We're going to do our little error check right here. And what happens is it outputs send hello world to Santa. So that's nice. And uh, by, by the way, this output actually comes from the mailarctica.mailer.send method. So it just outputs it to standard out. And there are two packages that I found really interesting, um, which are especially useful if you have larger code bases uh, with this type of dependency injection to maintain. There's one called inject by Facebook. Uh, this is supposed to be a link. Yeah, inject by Facebook. And there's another Golang package, which is just called inject. Uh, they're both on GitHub. I'll make sure to share the slides with you so that you can look through everything. And uh, dependency injection. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask me. Otherwise, I thank you for your attention.